The movie begins with a blue-headed Baldy falling to his death as we're then given his backstory. His fat-headed ass came from the planet called the Five Heads, where everyone there, including his parents, have four heads so big it can't fit the screen. So little buddy gets transported last minute before his planet's destroyed and sees another baby in the same situation. Yeah. <laughs> And they both land on Earth as the blue one was set to live in the upper class good life going yeah. But psych, the other baby took his spot making the blue one land in prison. And just from that alone, that'll make me a villain. Cause what do you mean I was about to live like them trust fund kids in private school to living in a prison? So while this baby gets pampered with love and cash, the blue one is raised by criminals who teach him what's right and what's wrong. Nah, growing up in a prison from birth is crazy. And both babies have superpowers, so this one's basically Superman and the other one uses his forehead for good use by creating and inventing things. Man, how are you gonna continue to lock up a literal baby in prison? Prison. So when Blueface gets the chance to go to school, he cross paths with Mr. Trust Fund. Yeah, I think the teacher's having too much fun, got her crossing her eyes and shit. And look at him, he's just trying to be nice, but they looking like, we don't take kindly to your kind. So as the teacher's pet continues to get glazed by his classmates, our little inmate just wanted to be loved and appreciated. I wanna be appreciated. So Bro creates a device that he controls at his will. Now mind you, this kid looks like he's nine years old or some shit. But Cross-Eyed isn't impressed, so when he tries creating popcorn for the kids too, he's treated like he's evil that deserves to be punished. Like he's just trying to make his classmates happy, but they're like, F this guy, put him in the corner. Bro, maturing is realizing these kids were the real bullies. They were the bad ones for purposely making our little inmate left out. Like he literally learned how to dehydrate and rehydrate animate objects, which is more than enough to be awarded the Nobel Prize. But nobody cares. Like the whole class be telling him, just put my fries in the f bag. And even when it came to games, they'd leave him out, making him the punching bag of the class. Yeah, these kids were dickheads. And when Bro creates a device to protect himself, every minor accident he makes, he gets treated like the worst person ever. And anything extraordinary he does, no one cares. Like, I can't tell if Bro's just super unlucky or if this is just the result of ugly privilege. It must be nice to be the teacher's pet. So you deliberately bully the inmate. And when he tries to protect himself, you exploit the situation for your benefit to get rewarded. Like, you're the reason why he made the device in the first place. But enough is enough. Everyone has a breaking point, And since anything he does gets him in trouble, he decides to embrace it. And Megamind was born. It's pretty sad when you realize his entire life changed that day moving forward, all thanks to his classmates and cross-eyed teacher who are the real bullies. So Megamind becomes a villain while the teacher's pet became Metro Man, the man the city glazes. And we're back to present day. Uh, the fuck? What? Boo! Huh. <laughs> You'll always be a villain. And you're a c Looks like you got a gift. Too bad I'm gonna wear it, bitch. So we see an invisible car and introduce the reporter Roxanne Ritchie and her cameraman Hal. So would you like to go out with me? <laughs> No. Kill me. Then Roxanne gets kidnapped and the watch on the warden turns him into Megamind. Who told you to play games, you donut munchers? Get him! So the warden is sent to the cell and Megamind steals the watch then turns into the warden and escapes. Oh, here, Ben 10 wannabe. Salute you, bitch. And with his beta sidekick minion together, they plan on battling Metro Man. Meanwhile, the man in tight spanks does a fruity ass twirl, shakes his groin, then takes and yeets babies. I'm a misogynist. Man, get off his dick. They so down bad, they literally kissing his feet and sh then he'd be saying corny ass lines like, The greatest honor you've given me is letting me serve you. <laughs> oh, and spoiler alert, this dude lying. Then Roxanne awakes in Megamind's crib. This place smells like ass. It's your mom's deodorant. <laughs> so while Roxanne is just sitting and chilling, the blue headed forehead face is original glazed. <laughs> it's the ugly one. Boo! <laughs> you eat my nose. Ooh, I'm scared that enough ladies kiss your feet. It's too bad you can't get a kiss from this. <gasps> We're right by the corner street. No the fuck we're not. And when Metro Man's on his way, she's like, Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. <laughs> and it turns out Metro Man entered the wrong observatory. Ta-da. Oh, shit. And with Metro Man confessing his weakness as copper, the observatory is blown by a death ray as Metro Man is immediately presumed dead. <gasps> My precious daddy dead. He did it. I did it. <laughs> so Megamind now rules the whole city. <sighs> Whoever drops their guns is gay. <laughs> <sighs> Did you think this day would ever come? No. Bitch, I will kill you. And when ruling over the city, Megamind is super thrilled and excited at first, only to then later feel empty and unhappy because he now has no purpose. Literally saying things like, without him, what's the point? This honestly sounds like bro's not even evil and just enjoyed getting his ass beat. The Metro Man's number one glazer starts talking like it's the end of the world, but what's funny is that she still has her job, no civilian is hurt or dead, and nothing's changed. I'd say this fat ass did more damage to a country than Megamind could ever dream of doing. Like compared to little Kim, bro's a saint. And Hal continues to hit on her. So I have this cool party in my place and maybe we can measure the size of my dick. Wow. Um, maybe next time. Do not walk away, I love you. Uh... Bruh, if anyone looks at you like this, read the room and move on. No one's dating your ugly ass. I know you're joking. Hmm. <laughs> Why do girls not like me? Wee! Then coincidentally, both Megamind and Roxanne talk to Metro Man's statue. I thought we'd have six kids and get married. Oh, for you to pound my ass again. Gay! 
and he plans to blow up the statue. I like feet. Roxanne? She, uh. What a shitty costume you got there. I bet my... Ho? Ho? The Megamind uses a dude named Bernard's body as a disguise. La la la. If only I could sniff his hair again. He smelled like cake. I didn't know you like Metro Man. Well, he's dead. And when Roxanne says heroes are made, Bro's forehead decides to create a new hero that he will personally train so that he can get his ass spanked again. So by using Metro Man's DNA, he extracts Metro Man's power so he can give it to somebody else. But Roxanne finds Megamind's hideout and in an unlikely turn of events, Metro Man's powers is given to Hal. The man with no riz. Ow. Really? This guy? Oh, brother, this guy Stinks! The Megamind turns into Bernard and tricks Roxanne. Oh, I saved you, and I don't know why I saved you. Oh! Wow, thanks for saving me back there. Hey, why are you talking to my girl, bruh? Hello, Porky. She's my partner. He's the Lulu. Mmm. You know what's sad about this scene? This was Megamind's first hug ever. So just like that, bro catches feelings. Call you tomorrow, partner. Oh, I guess I'm not gay. Then Megamind follows Hal. Ah. I only have like $3 in the fridge. Knock his ass out. Oh, he's so pretty. The minion and Megamind pretend to be his space parents to trick Hal when he receives Metro Man's powers. You died. I did? You'll be the new Metro Man and better. Man, imagine having the best glob you can possibly get and you still got a double chin and a non-existent jawline. So later, Megamind begins to train Hal. Ugh! Zap! Die! Yo, what the f***? I like underwear up my crack. Then Megamind starts dating Roxanne and girl got him biting his lips. Oh, he honey. So sorry. Tihi, am I kawaii? Ooh. So Megamind becomes a sim because if there's anything Roxanne doesn't like about the city, Megamind fixes it. Okay, Megamind, I see you. So was your fat ass blue forehead standing in the way of your charm. And when Hal is finally ready, he gets his own costume with the hero name Titan. But one day Minion figures out what his boss is up to. Yo, bitch ass dating Roxanne? You traitor! I'm horny and I like to lie. You baka! Who the f*** wants to be the bad guy anymore? Aww. I miss your mama's panties. What'd you say? F*** you. Well, at least I don't need to wipe your ass. You're an ugly f***. I know. So Minion quits and bro goes on to his day. And when Roxanne starts to get an idea of Megamind's plan, Hal pulls up. And let me tell you, in terms of Riz, anything Hal does in this film, don't do it and I'll explain to you why. Hey, shoddy. Ah! You haven't been naughty, have you? The f***? Yes, he actually said that. Here, I got you some flowers. I don't know you. Okay, then f*** the flowers. Let's go for a ride. Ah, what the f***? Whoops. Ah! Then this dude deadass yeets her and throws her over a building. So first of all, you don't randomly sneak up behind someone and think that's how they'll be interested. Secondly, you're a stranger with a mask on. She doesn't know you. She doesn't know your intentions or what kind of person you are. So pulling up to a crib uninvited with a cart of flowers is just giving desperation. They're not gonna think you're kind and considerate. In fact, if anything, they're gonna think you're desperate and horny. Maybe if Titan defeated Megamind and built up your name as a hero, then at least she could be interested because her personality is built on hating Megamind. But no, you pull up to a crib, then just grabbed her into the air and dropped her so you can save her? Now, does that look like the face of someone who's turned on? Yeah, yeah, she clearly wants you, bro. And then you yeeted her and threw her over a building like she's some sort of tennis ball. Like, you think she gonna like that shit? So guess what she gonna say? I'll f***ing kill you! So he drops her on the tallest tower and reveals his identity. Ta-da! How? So can we have babies? There's no us. But I'm six feet. I'm the good guy. But you look like Jello. You belong with me! Actually, I'm independent. Oh, yeah? Then he just leaves her at the top of the tower. Hmm, maybe she cancelled. <sighs> Do you think I'm a bitch? Your hair! Holy sh! Answer my question. Well, damn, Roxanne, your forehead wide as hell. I see why you wear them bangs. Mega might be looking at her like, Twin, where have you been? Nobody knows me like you do, nobody. So she tells Mega Mind everything that happened with Hal, and he's like, Man, don't worry about it. And with Hal watching, he gets his heart broken twice in one night. So they be vibing and end up kissing, but Roxanne touches his watch, getting rid of his disguise. <gasps> Wee! Mm hmm. Ah! Ah! <gasps> Don't look at me! Give me two seconds. The f- You like me? Ew. <laughs> yeah, this might be the worst day of her life. She looks traumatized. I have a pen. I have pineapple. Uh, pineapple pen. You can tell we were meant for each other. You actually got me to be in love with you. You blue-headed f- You really think I would ever be with you? No. And Roxanne rejects two guys in one day, but she ends up looking back because she want to touch that big ass temple. So Bro decides to lock in and gets ready for the battle of Hal. Man, we got Megamind's ass cheeks before GDA 6. That's crazy. So he sinks himself with a robot he made and goes out into the streets to fight Titan. And I'm just saying Megamind has way more potential to help humanity than Metro Man because by using his gifts, he can make inventions like minimizing pollution or making AI robots. Like he literally became Ben 10. And he also extracted Metro Man's power just by using his DNA, whereas Metro Man is just best suited for fighting crime. Anyway, he goes, I have the yacht. Where you at? Uh, no you don't, but he provokes Titan and waits, but he never shows up. Man, what the f***? You! Get out! Who do you think you are making me wait? Oh yeah, I totally forgot. Hmm? 
What's this? There's cash and cash everywhere. Then Joe Biden's bike. I took it all for free. You stole it. Being a hero is for losers. I only did it for Roxanne, but she likes that nerd with glasses. Roxanne Richie. Yeah, it's bullshit. Oh, shit. Bro, you were there when Hal got defensive over Roxanne. Like, you didn't think for a second he had a crush on her as her cameraman? We should team up. What? This could be us. See? You could be like my slave because I want to rule the world and your head is as big as a planet. B please. You're the good guy. That's why I created you. Sure, bro. I am your daddy. Oh, and I'm also the nerd that stole your girl. No. Mwah. Mwah. Yeah, at that point, anyone would be pissed from that. I kill you. I give you the backhand and the nutcrack. Then Titan gives a one, two, and three piece combo to beat his ass. Come on then, what did you do with my mom? Oh, she sent me some pics. Nudes? Yes, sir. You can take me to jail now. You're dead. Game over. <gasps> so he hits a button to escape for a butt crack. Yeah, Brody came out like. <laughs> and when Titan's about to kill him, Five Ed traps him in carpet, the same carpet that Metro Man said was his weakness. So you would think Mega Mind's got him right where he wanted, right? Psych! What the hell? I'm your daddy now. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray, we're saved! Who wants to lick his feet? Let's start with your mom, man. Ah! Now what confused me about this part is that you just defeated Megamind. Titan was about to live a comfortable life with everyone loving him. Like, even if you're not a good guy, you could have still been a homelander or something. But you attacked the man, now everyone hates you and you might rule a city, but you'll be alone with no purpose. Like, you really didn't have much to gain from that. I don't know why you would do that. Anyway, Megamind asked Roxanne to work together and that's how the no bitches meme was born. So they team up and Roxanne takes him to Metro Man's hidden crib to find clues to beat Titan. You want a Netflix and chill? No! no! And they enter his hidden crib. Ugh, if I could get pounded again while he wears that coat. Does this make me look Sigma? Um, yeah, Slay Queen. Oh, and Metro Man's alive. Mm hmm? Hey. <laughs> You lied? Are you a hoe? Here's the truth. I didn't want my legacy to be built on beating a blue body with the head of the size of Uranus, so I faked my death to start doing music. How do I what? Yeah. <laughs> you son of a bitch! And while Titan's destroying the city, Metro Man's like, I ain't gonna do nothing about it, and tells Megamind to stop being a villain and find his calling. Then Bro's like, well, we're screwed. I'm the bad guy, and I don't get the girl. I'm going home. Uh, well at least he's self-aware. So Megamind turns himself in because he sees jail as his home and Roxanne heads to the city to face Titan. Yeah, Shiba. The hell do you want? I've come to stop you, Hal. Girl, you think you Naruto or something using talk no jutsu to talk your way out of beating a villain? You gotta listen to me. Oh yeah? And Titan makes Roxanne his hostage. Roxanne, I love you. <laughs> I have freckles. So Megamind apologized to the warden saying, sorry. But it was actually Minion he was talking to, then they make up and face Titan. So while this dude crashes out because he can't handle rejection, Megamind pulls up and frees Roxanne just for this dude to pick a tower with his hands and yeets it. Then our brave Baldi saves Roxanne but gets stabbed by the tower. No, he got stabbed? Yeah, Roxanne definitely got the ick. Then this savage uses a bus and kicks it at Roxanne like, damn, chill out. What, because she didn't want to go out with you? It ain't that deep. You want to know what's funny? Girl, why are you ducking? Like, did you think the bus was going to fly? What's ducking gone at all? And she's saved by Metro Man. Uh, aren't you dead? It's time we'll get them freckles removed. So this dude runs away like a pussy as his then revealed Megamind is fake and actually Minion and the real Megamind is playing as Metro Man. Oh, oh, no, I'm already ugly. You'll stay out of metrocity. You got it? So Titan dips and Metro Man is celebrated but Roxanne wanted to give credit where credit is due showing the public it's Megamind that saved them. Even the baby's like, what the f*** are you doing here? But Hal comes back like, there's only one weirdo that calls Metro City metrocity. So Megamind's like, huh, uh. yeah. I'm gonna kill him. Then Megamind gets smacked into a wall, which should have broken his spine, but he finds his invisible car, grabs the diffuser gun, but is then yeeted to the sky to die from falling. And just when you think he'll look like a splattered blue jello, Megamind sees a fountain of water, so he uses a dehydration gun to safely land and successfully extracts Titan's powers. <laughs> And the people cheer and celebrates. We won, we won! Yay! Ah, get the f away! He has a pencil up his butt crack. And the movie ends with Megamind getting his own statue, being crowned as the city's new hero. Now give me your money. Huh? <laughs> Just kidding. I wonder if he'll still be seen as their hero if they found out he's the one who created Titan and doesn't everyone think he murdered Metro Man? I guess they don't care. Um, hey, my kid can't see. Man, f*** them kids. Knew you could do it. So Megamind's the good guy now, Hal is in jail, and Bro gets the girl. And we can forget the sequel ever happened. Thanks for watching. For next week's video, it's a movie that you guys have been requesting for the longest time. So I think you'll like it uh, and do look forward to it. It's been your boy KC, and yeah, till next time.